Word of God says that for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, so that every man who believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Well, what does this mean? What? Why would God love us? Well, there's a parable in the Bible where Jesus says that there's a man who has hundred sheep, and one of them gets lost, and he leaves the ninety-nine where he knows that they'll be safe to look for the one that's lost. And when he finds him, he will rejoice and be happy because he found the one that he lost. And he'll be proud to carry him back home on his shoulders. This parable means that God is the shepherd and we are the sheep. Eventually, we are bound to get lost and then. And I'm going to tell you a story about a man who was supposed to perish and yet now is living a rich life. At the age of five, his father gave him a mixture of coffee, eggs, banana, and whiskey. At the age of five, everything, every breakfast he had was considered with whiskey. From Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, every day, he ate whiskey. At the age of twelve, he started to experiment with drugs, ecstasy, speed, heroin, weed. At the age of 14, he was kicked out of high school because of a fight that half of the school got into. At the age of 19, he got married. And at the age of 19, his marriage was already being broken down. His brother was sentenced 99 years in prison. And him got depressed and got into a hospital room where they diagnosed him um, suffering depression and sort of he was sort of suicidal. Now, a volunteer from the hospital walked into his room and told him that the medics in the room were not going to heal him. They weren't going to do anything to help him. There was basically nothing they could do. But then she told him about someone who could heal them, him, who could take him out of where he was, somewhere where he would eventually become. She told him that the name of this man was Jesus Christ, and that Jesus Christ loved him. But the man questioned her and asked, "How could how could Jesus love me, a, a guy that I would drink when I was five years old, a guy who did drugs?" 12, got kicked out of school, and was suicidal. And the woman told him that God didn't just die for those who don't sin. He came to die for those who do. For those, those stealers, those murderers, those fornicators, those who, who lie and steal whenever they choose to. And she asked him, would you like to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior? That night, they prayed. And he accepted the Lord, and after weeks and weeks of depression and not sleeping and waking up of nightmares, he slept peacefully. He slept like a baby. And after that, his, his life changed. His marriage was restored. He started going to church. And after a couple of weeks, he told his pastor that he was sorry, but he would stop going to church. The pastor asked him, why? Why would you stop? And the man said, I feel like a hypocrite coming to church and still drinking, going home to sin. And the pastor told him, it doesn't matter if you sin, keep coming. It doesn't matter if you drink, keep coming. It doesn't matter how bad your sin is, you keep coming. And the man asked, well, why? No one else in this church sins. No one else drinks. I'm the only one who of sin. The pastor said, it doesn't matter, you keep coming. I'm not the one that's going to heal you from this drinking problem you have. God's going to heal you. God's going to take alcohol out of your life whenever he sees fit. A couple months go by, he goes to the store, buys himself a six pack of Bud Light. He gets the can, he drinks it, he chugs it. He looks at the bottle and says, this is the last alcoholic drink I'm ever going to have. And he'd go, to, he'd go to church, proud. He'd stand up in front of everybody and say, I'm thankful because I am one week sober. I am two weeks sober. One month. 
two months, four months, a year, years pass, and he's still moving. So the same man wants to have kids, but his wife can't bear to have it. So he tells the pastors and the congregation of the church, he tells them, I want to have kids, but my, my wife can't. So they pray and pray. And finally, the man has his first child, he named her Sarai. And this child, the doctor <coughs> told their parents that she was diagnosed with epilepsy. The man was crushed. So he went to church and told the pastors and the congregation, told them that their daughter, the first daughter, was diagnosed with epilepsy. And they prayed, and she was healed. The doctors called them, told them that they made a huge mistake, that she's fine. The man has his second child, and that child, when he's seven years old, is hit by a truck. The man sees his own son get hit by the truck and fly across the street. Sees his own son get hit by a truck and fall under another one. And he looks away because he knows the child is dead. But when he looks up, he sees his kid walk up, stand up, get up without a scratch. And he tells his dad, Dad, get the pastor here. I need her to pray for me. And they prayed for him. But the man, he was prepared. He took him to the emergency room. The doctors got x-rays. They figured out nothing was wrong. And then the man has his third child. And the third child, at the age of two, swallows a two-inch needle. And they take him to the emergency room. The doctors say that he has a 50% chance of survival. He takes the child to the church and to the pastors. And they all pray. And later on, the child poops the two-inch needle, and he's all right. And then the man has his fourth child. But three months of pregnancy, the doctors diagnosed the child with Down syndrome. And the man was crushed. He went to his pastors hoping that they would tell him that everything's going to be okay, that everything's going to be all right, we'll take care of it. Instead, when he tells his pastor what happened, the pastor pushes him, and he almost falls to the ground and tells him, I didn't dedicate so much of my time on you so that you can act like this, so you can act like a coward. How many times has God saved you from so many problems? How many times did he save you from your first, your second, and your third child? That's, the Word of God says that whenever there's two or three gathered together in my name, that that's where I will be. And the pastor starts telling him, the Word of God says this, and this, and this and it gives the man hope. So the man prays and prays and prays. And on the seventh day, the doctors call him and his wife to the clinic. He tells him that they made a terrible mistake, that the child is perfectly fine. And the man, he's surprised, but yet still believes. Well, this man, this fourth, and they named the fourth child Caleb. I was supposed to be an abortion. I was supposed to be down, born with Down syndrome. My dad was a man who always had faith in the Lord, who God changed because God gave his only begotten son so that any man who believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Every man who believes in him will be restored, renewed. And any type of problem he faces, he will overcome. Because the Lord is always with those who believe. And with the Lord, he can overcome any obstacle. And anything can be overcome with the Lord. Um, I want everyone to stand. Bow your head so you can pray. <laughs> if anyone could close your eyes and bow their head, I'm going to make a calling to all those who, who haven't asked the Lord to come into their hearts. If you want to ask the Lord to be your Lord, 
for Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, I want you to raise your right hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, I'm going to ask my father to come here with me to pray that same prayer that that woman prayed with him. Amen. If you raise up your hand and you're concerned about your decision to ask Jesus Christ to come to your heart, let's make this prayer in English and then we'll do it in Spanish. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and bring to your heart all of the sins and everything that you've done against God. God is a good God and He wants to forgive your sins. He wants you to come back to Him. If, you, if you've left Him somewhere in, in the way, somewhere in your past, somewhere in your youth, God wants you to come back. So if you lift that up your hand and you want to make that prayer with me, just repeat with me that prayer. I'm just going to guide you. This is between you and God. God is right here, right now, in this day, in this hour, in this time. He's right there by your side and He wants to... He wants you to make uh, your peace with Him. So just repeat this prayer with, with me and tell Him like this. Tell Him, Father God, come on, open up your mouth and tell Him, Father God, in Jesus' name, I repent of all my sins. I ask that you please come into my heart. I give you my heart, my soul, and my spirit. And I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. And I resign to everything bad that I have done and to all my sins. In Jesus' name, I thank you because today I am your son and I have been forgiven. Amen. Vamos a hacer la oración en español. Si a ti te gustaría pedirle a Cristo que le entre a tu corazón y que perdone tus pecados, solamente eso. Por favor, levanta tu mano. Queremos orar por ti. ¿Habrá alguien aquí que quiere hacer una oración en español? Por favor, levanta tu mano. ¿Habrá alguien? Si no lo hay, si lo hay, si no quiere levantar tu mano y quiere hacer la oración conmigo, la vamos a hacer. Ahí donde usted está. Si usted le quiere pedir a Cristo que entre a su corazón y que perdone sus pecados, solamente repita esa oración conmigo. Dígale, Dios Padre, en el nombre de Jesús, yo te pido perdón, Señor. Perdóname por todos mis pecados, por toda mi maldad, Señor. Por no haberte aceptado antes, por haber oído la palabra por tanto tiempo y no haberme entregado antes. Perdóname por todo lo malo que tú y yo sabemos que ando haciendo. Yo me arrepiento y te pido que me limpies y que me cambies y que me transformes y que me libertes. Yo abro mi corazón ahorita, Jesús, a ti, y te recibo como mi único Salvador. Te entrego mi cuerpo, mi alma y mi espíritu, y renuncio a toda la maldad que he hecho y a todo mi pecado, en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Y gracias. Buenos días.